Hi, my name is Ian Wallace from the Victorian Chamber of Commerce and Industry, and this is the first webinar in a two webinar series uh, around talking safety with young workers and how to improve connections with them. Uh, so, first of all, uh, a few objectives. So, the key objective here with the first slide is to make sure that um, you have a sense of why young workers are vulnerable and what their particular characteristics are in terms of safety and injury. And, um, and this webinar will help you begin to think about how to improve uh, uh, yeah, connecting better with young workers. Uh, so you should leave this session having a good understanding about why it can be difficult to communicate with them. <clears throat> In terms of, uh, I guess, a bit of statistic background, uh, there's about 2,500 or just over 2,500 injury claims per year. Uh, between April 2015 and March 2016, uh, young workers are defined as being between uh, the ages of 15 to 24. 73% of those were actually recorded in the Melbourne metro area and then uh, the remaining pretty much uh, in regional Victoria, just as a bit of a breakdown. The dominant sector is uh, in the construction sector. Uh, this equates to about 10% of claims overall. Uh, during this period as well, there was one young worker fatality uh, which is pretty sad. Uh, young workers in construction, retail, manufacturing and hospitality generally suffered the most uh, injuries. In terms of causation, uh, poor manual handling was the primary cause with just over 30% closely followed by being hit or struck by moving objects. It's no surprise that hand, finger and back injuries are also among the most common types of injuries uh, for this group. Um, WorkSafe and the other safety regulators are very busy in this space. They have uh, quite well designed and, uh, and focused programs targeting young workers. Uh, uh, WorkSafe itself is conducting inspectorate visits to manufacturing, retail and accommodation in, in the food services sector specifically. Uh, and uh, they, they generally focus, WorkSafe generally focus around uh, policy and legislative matters, uh, but also in, uh, in terms of education and enforcement by um, conducting a project specifically focusing uh, on knowledge, skills and resources of supervisors and managers of young workers uh, in the construction sector specifically. So there is a... Um, uh, what's called the Heads of Workplace Safety Authorities project that focuses on the construction sector and young workers. So why are they more vulnerable? Um, young workers, as you can see by the slide, uh, are, um, I guess, you know, uh, they should be treated with a little bit of uh, consideration. Uh, they uh, join the workforce straight out of school, so they've gone from quite a very structured env control environment into a brand new, different and quite uh, often unpredictable work environment uh, where they are at times expected to know and, ex and act uh, and engage with fellow co-workers and managers. Each of the young worker, uh, sorry, each young worker typically wants to impress their new manager, uh, so they they are likely not to want to bother them with lots of questions, even if they do have them. They also appear to often wish, uh, appear to know as if they know the task completely. Along with trying to impress, young workers will often cut corners in an effort to try to do the work faster and appear more efficient. Obviously, this comes with uh, a lack of detail, a lack of attention to detail, and often leads to the young worker suffering an injury. Overconfidence is a common problem with young workers. Uh, they can often appear to be, uh, you know, all-knowing, and, and they simply palm off instructions as if they feel like they've got this and they're ready to go. Because young workers are often employed as temporary, seasonal, uh, or as interns, 
Uh, they may also be more likely to feel pressured to be able to perform all their tasks, uh, avoid asking questions or raising concerns through uh, fear or a lack of knowledge and be exposed to risky tasks with minimal supervision. In order to focus in this area, um, one of the state safety regulators, WorkSafe South Australia, partnered with Central Queensland University, uh, in particular Verna Blewett uh, and her team. And they conducted a, a body of research that looked at the experience of young workers and their safety, uh, I guess, exposures and stories. And so this uh, research um, looked at you know, global strategies and literature reviews, but particularly looked at a survey, certainly had a few surveys of young workers and their safety stories. Uh, they looked at young worker knowledge and experience of safety, and then they also ran focus groups with young, young people, key stakeholders, including business, uh, representatives, parents, teachers, inspectors, etc. Uh, this research, uh, I guess, uh, used a mixture of these approaches and they relied on a strong social media presence to reach young workers so that they could include their voice in that research. They also heard, as I said, from stakeholders and social partners to canvas young workers' opinions and ideas. They, they identified eight key areas for action in this area in, for young worker safety. The psychosocial working environment, the physical work environment, precarious work-life balance, fatigue, training and education uh, of workers and employers, the need to hear the voice of young workers and the obstacles faced by employers. So the first uh, area of those eight areas of research, the psychosocial working environment, uh, they, the research found that young workers wanted to feel accepted at work and to be treated in a way that made them feel comfortable to be themselves. As one young worker put it, if I don't feel safe, I won't be able to do my job as efficiently and I might fear things and this may make me hesitate. Young workers also reported feeling more engaged in safety if their workplace, uh, sorry, in their workplace, if they were part of the actual safety process. Uh, some key themes, some sub-themes, I guess, in this psychosocial area were bullying, stress, and what's classed as high demand, low control work. The second area is the physical work environment where young worker participants in the research said that, they, that lifting heavy items was uh, a key safety issue. Uh, about 30% of them said this was in their top three concerns. Around 65% identified using chemicals at work as a safety concern with most of this or the majority of this in hospitality and then in retail. Young workers tend to work as unskilled workers where physical hazards are more common uh, and this generates some psychosocial concerns. And they're often given uh, the least desirable jobs in the workplace, uh, which tend to be the most risky, but also um, tend to impact their sense of value. Precarious work and work-life balance yeah, it was the third area of uh, that appeared. Uh, the lack of security in employment for young workers is inherent in both the type of industry and the employment type normally worked. Uh, young workers often work in unskilled jobs which give them a sense of being dispensable and easily replaced. Further, young workers are often employed on a casual basis which makes it easy to terminate their employment compared with those on permanent contracts. Uh, 30, just over a third, 36%, indicated that they would be unlikely to report a work health and safety concern because they might lose their job. This is particularly concerning. There are also concerns on the ability to achieve good work, study and life balance. The fourth area is fatigue, where young workers uh, selected this item just behind stress and psychosocial hazards. 
due to not being adequately trained uh, and also due to heavy lifting. 75% are selected fatigue as a significant safety issue with 28% listing this uh, within their top three safety concerns. This is particularly true when uh, uh, people are declining change shift times uh, because they fear this could result in a stressful workplace or indeed being offered less work in the future. Point five in terms of the training and education of young workers, uh, there are three sort of areas in this uh, set. So uh, the first being young workers receive training in safety at work, but where they obtain information raises issues about the quality and veracity of that information. Information from workmates, friends and the internet obviously cannot necessarily be relied on as accurate. Uh, the second in terms of training and education is about the quality and the veracity of the training itself when they receive it. Some workers feel that this was insufficient. Some workers feel uh, reported a lack of induction altogether when starting a new job. And there was a sense that workplace training was minimised as it occurs during paid time. The third refers to the best ways to impart information and training on safety to young workers and their concerns around that. The sixth area that uh, came out of the research was training and education of employers. Many large work, uh, organisations, there's a capacity for specific safety team or specialists, whereas in smaller organisations they don't have that capacity. There are issues with the flow of information within organisations. And while OHS and HR have a good understanding of, our, of safety, this information may not be effectively passed to managers who are more likely to interact with uh, the safety issues and young workers on a day-to-day -day basis. There are obstacles for employers in this area. And key stakeholders referred to young workers in experience as providing an additional complexity uh, to ensuring a safe workplace. There is a need to internalise young worker responsibilities and actively guard against risk taking. And this is generally due to uh, a, a, an immature sense of risk. Many young apprentices hold a, a bit of a view that they're bulletproof and that they tend not to be scared. Um, or if they are, they, uh, they conceal it. And they don't actually internalise the responsibilities they have to themselves due to their immaturity. Employers need to accept that young workers' skills are still developing and to actively encourage reporting by young workers. And this requires a culture that accepts error and reporting without actually blaming and in fact rewarding reporting or you know, commending reporting. There is a high turnover of young workers in certain industries and this is also an obstacle experienced by employers. Engaging young workers in the workplace and in safety can be difficult for employers unless they take a very mindful and concerted effort to do so. The eighth point uh, was the, the, young, the voice of young workers themselves in the research finding. So according to the research, hearing the voice of young workers is crucial in keeping them healthy and safe. Four key areas arose uh, for young workers voicing their concerns about safety in the workplace. Firstly, their ability to reject unsafe work or unhealthy work practices. Secondly, obstacles to them reporting safety issues. Thirdly, whether or not advocates such as Parents, caregivers, contact officers, HSRs and unions are involved and provided. And then fourthly, concerns regarding culturally and linguistically diverse uh, young people. Each of these four areas highlighted ways the young worker voices are either silenced or indeed can be heard.
Um, if you're interested in what young workers actually have said, there on screen you'll see that we're linked to a Safe Work Australia seminar series. Uh, and this is where well, young workers have been interviewed uh, and uh, they are personally responding to you know, some questions around safety and workers' compensation. Uh, and you can you know, hear their responses. Certainly recommend uh, this as, as key viewing. So in summary, uh, for the end of this uh, first of two webinars, uh, young workers deserve specific attention uh, to ensure their, their workplace safety. They have distinctive injury and behavioural traits that need to be understood uh, by organisations. And there's clear evidence that proves this, especially this research. Organisations need to plan specifically for young workers and their safety concerns uh, and or obviously workers and the employers suffer as a consequence. Okay, uh, this is the end of the first of two webinar series and uh, there is a uh, the final slide. If you're looking for further advice or assistance on this, then you can contact myself or indeed part of our workplace, uh, sorry, health safety and wellbeing team at the Victorian Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Uh, and I uh, certainly encourage you to view the second of the webinars uh, in this series as well to complete your, your knowledge around this area. So thank you and uh, it would be a pleasure to hear from you. Okay.